Performance Max is the newest Google Ads campaign type available to us. So how exactly does it work? In short, it is designed to take over a large majority of the legwork involved in your day-to-day -day management and your week-to-week -week -week management. Performance Max campaigns draw from different kinds of assets and use real-time data to create the best possible ad for each prospect, depending on where they are on the internet and where they are within their purchase journey. Setting them up is quite simple. You just kind of choose your main objective, whether that's conversions or leads, provide all the different assets, and they walk you through that pretty easily. And then if you are eligible, set up your negative search terms and you're good to go. Performance Max campaigns do use machine learning to automatically create your ads and automatically choose where to advertise them. And it takes over the different bidding strategies as well. Uh, these campaigns are designed to improve the deliverability and performance of your ads across all of Google's different networks, which means Pmax campaigns are eligible to show on Google SERPs, similar to your traditional search campaigns and your uh, shopping campaigns, but they can also create ads and be delivered on YouTube, Display, Discovery, as well as Gmail and Google Maps. So think of Pmax campaigns as combining all of your existing campaign types into one large campaign and drawing from all your different assets in, uh, in your existing campaign types. You can view this video from Google explaining Pmax more in depth. It is available on YouTube if you want to pull it up. So how exactly do you set these up? Well, one thing that is quite different from Pmax campaigns than your traditional shopping or search campaigns is Performance Max does not use ad groups. Instead, they use something called asset groups. And uh, you can think of these similar to ad groups, but really the only thing you're changing is the actual visual aids, the assets that are inside all of these groups. So in these asset groups, you can have all of your products in one large asset group, or you can have them broken down into different product categories or your different product types. The assets you include in each group are similar to what you may already have in existing campaigns. In addition to connecting your product feed and having your Pmax campaign pull information from your product feed, you also need to supply your headlines, your descriptions, images, videos, logos. And uh, on top of all that, you can still assign your traditional ad extensions like site links, callouts, and structured snippets. There are some unique character limits within Performance Max campaigns that don't exist in your standard RSA ads. So you may need to adjust them down if you're going to copy them over directly from existing search campaigns. Again, think of your Pmax campaign as pulling any possible asset you have and letting the Pmax campaign automatically create the ad depending on where it's going to be shown and, and depending on what type of placement it's going to be. Setting up your asset groups is pretty quick, especially if you are using the ads editor. But the hardest part and the, the most strategic part is actually going to be deciding how many of your products you want grouped together and which one of them you want in separate campaigns or in separate asset groups. So think of this as which categories you want in their own campaign or, or in the same uh, campaign with different asset groups. For example, if you're an e-commerce brand, do you have all of your apparel in one campaign and then have your shirts in one asset group and, and your pants in another asset group? And then, you know, would you have uh, footwear in its own separate campaign with boots in one asset group, sandals in another asset group? A great example of this, we have a client that sells outdoor apparel and equipment, and they are quite seasonal in winter and summer, depending on, on what they're selling. So we have all of their apparel products in one campaign, but we have all of their winter product in a winter asset group, all of their summer products in a summer asset group, using different visual aids, different headlines, descriptions, et cetera. We have some best practices and recommendations about breaking these out later on, and Natalie will go over, over some of those um, towards the end of the presentation. The other main lever that you have available to you is audience signals. So audience signals are used to help speed up the learning process of your Performance Max campaign. We typically see there's about a 30 to 60 day learning curve on these Pmax campaigns and the correct audience signals can help with that learning curve and get you to achieving your goals sooner. Audience signals can include your custom audiences like your past customers, a segmented list of your high AOV customers, card abandonment customers, et cetera. Or you can use some Google generated audiences like similar audi audiences to your best customers 
or in market audiences for whatever vertical you're in. Assigning audiences helps speed up the learning process, as I said, and helps point the PMAX campaigns to your ideal customer and your top performing customer. It is important, though, to note that the audience signals that you provide do not limit who or where uh, Google will target. They will simply use them as a guide, but they absolutely will go outside of those audiences that you have provided to those PMAX campaigns. So as a disclaimer, audience signals are not required. However, they are strongly recommended. Google will recommend using at least two audience signals, but for many of our accounts, we have far more than that. We have some accounts with upwards of 20 different audience signals per asset group. So how does all this work in real life and some, what are some of those real world results? We have a case study going over one of our success stories with our client, uh, KEH Camera. So going back to Q3 of last year, a lot of accounts we were managing were running on a combination of smart shopping campaigns or traditional shopping campaigns, either using smart bidding strategies or manual CPC bidding strategies. And anytime there's a change on Google, the question is always the same. How do we run these new campaign types and how do we maintain or exceed our client's revenue and return goals? So a little bit of background on KEH. KEH is one of our longtime clients. They sell new, uh, used and refurbished cameras, lenses, and other camera gear. And before we made the switch over to Pmax, about half of all of our paid search revenue was coming from the shopping campaigns using a combination of manual bidding strategies or smart bidding strategies. We were using a tiered structured system, meaning we had anywhere from one to three shopping campaigns for each of their product categories, like cameras, lenses, mounts, et cetera. We did this at the time because it allows to have a varying level of bids and a varying list of negative keywords. So we could essentially control the type of search terms that were showing up and how much we were paying for them. So for example, low intent, broad search term, we'd have it flow into a low intent campaign, have a very small bid, a high intent search term, we'd have it go into the high intent campaign and bid much higher. And the reason I bring this up is because one of the limitations to performance max campaigns is visibility into your search terms and some limited control over your negative search terms. Well, when PMAX first launched, there was no way to apply negative keyword lists right out of the gate. There are a few ways that we can do that now. So as we tiptoed into our PMAX campaigns, our strategy with KH was to take a gradual approach and switch over a few campaigns at a time so we could learn, see if there were any mistakes that we had made, and understand the type of results that we could expect while transitioning over to PMAX. The first thing we did was actually we paused all of the smart shopping campaigns that had automatically been created and automatically switched over to PMAX. As Natalie touched on, if you were running some of these smart shopping campaigns and you saw the automatically created assets, they were quite disappointing. They would miss out on some of our brand standards. Some of the videos that they created really were missing the mark. So we decided we kind of wanted to start from scratch or at least pause and take inventory of what had been created. We reviewed all the smart uh, and manual bidding shopping campaigns and determined which ones we could consolidate down. Going back to what I touched on in the previous slides, picking and choosing your product categories to segment and consolidating them down is a crucial step. Uh, and it's part of the reason why it took us about four months to completely transition KEH over to a PMAX dominant account. Since we no longer had a need for our negative keyword list that we had created, uh, we ultimately were able to consolidate down from 34 different shopping campaigns to 12 active PMAX campaigns across the whole account. We started with our top performing shopping campaigns and top performing smart shopping campaigns and slowly transitioned them over to PMAX. The graph on the screen uh, will show you the percentage of budget we moved over from shopping to our PMAX campaigns over the course of about four months. Part of our goal was to get PMAX up and running in time for the Q4 shopping season, which is why there was such a large uh, jump come October and November. During the transition period, and even to this day, we still have some shopping campaigns running in addition to all of those PMAX campaigns. This was just a test how we would see the spend switch, how the results would switch over, and just kind of gave us an idea of what we could expect from those PMAX campaigns versus the shopping campaigns. One thing to keep in mind, if there's a search auction and your shopping campaign and your PMAX campaign are both eligible for that same auction, Google will prioritize that PMAX campaign. 
So this is why we saw a shift in traffic, a shift in conversions, a shift in revenue going towards those PMAX campaigns. It's also important to remember not all the spend we move from our shopping campaigns is going directly to shopping ads run out of PMAX. Again, part of the performance in our PMAX campaigns is coming from search, display, retargeting, and, and so on. So even with this in mind, we still continue to increase our performance max budgets. And as you can see, even after the holiday season was over, we nearly doubled the amount of budget from our shopping campaigns into our existing PMAX campaigns. So what were the results? Similar to the shift in spend, we saw a very large shift in revenue coming from those PMAX campaigns. In total, in the months following the transition from shopping to PMAX, we saw a 76% increase in revenue attributed to those PMAX campaigns compared to the shopping campaigns, and a 44% increase in transactions compared to shopping campaigns. In total, over a six month period, across the entire account and all campaign types, we saw an increase in revenue each month between 38% and 93% year over year. And across that same six month period, we averaged nearly a 10X return on ad spend across all those PMAX campaigns. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremiah. A great example of when you do it right, how powerful Performance Max can be, as well as some notes in there from Jeremiah about some of those things to keep in mind as far as um, some of the limitations and the shifting landscape that is around Performance Max and how much it does require taking a close look and making sure that you're really on the ball when you start launching these campaigns and testing them. For some tips for doing that and making sure that your team is all ready to go, um, I'm going to pass it over to Natalie again, who's going to cover some of our team's recommendations and strategies we've discovered um, over the last year or so. Absolutely. So we've talked about what it is and shown you how impactful it was for our one specific client. But we also want to talk through when and how to implement it in your own accounts and share some of our own personal learnings um, that we've discovered through testing over this time period that we've been testing out performance max. So with machine learning, the more accurate information you feed it, the faster you feed it, the better results you will get. When you have an account with a larger budget and more SKUs, the machine just has so much more to work with. And in turn, the better your campaigns will perform. Through our testing, we have learned that the most successful PMAX campaigns have been in clients with competitive budgets, large and well-maintained product feeds, visually appealing, creative, and lots of conversions. Um, the more conversions the account records, the faster the machine can actually determine the factors that those conversions have in common and then use that to target more aggressively. Performance Max always works better when you have a very specific advertising and conversion goal in place. On the flip side of that, while campaigns can still be successful, we proceed with a lot more caution when it comes to accounts with more limited budgets, SKUs, and creative available. This is purely due to the nature of machine learning. If we aren't feeding the data, it has a lot less insight into what will work when trying to intelligently spend your money, and it requires much more oversight to run those campaigns. There's a quick little question um, oh. about when we were referring to the budgets, what's a large budget with a limited budget. Can you kind of provide a bit more clarity into that? Honestly, that to me at least is very determined on the industry that we're trying to advertise in. That's why I use the word competitive budget because in some specific industries, you know, a $5,000 budget might be plenty. Whereas in others, that's going to be like the bare minimum you could even start advertising in that space. So unfortunately, there's no hard and fast answer that I have for that one because it really is super dependent on the industry and the space that you're trying to advertise in. As Jeremiah mentioned, when reviewing the, the build details of the campaigns, there are quite a few things that we can provide during creation to set the campaign up for success and additional testing we can do to help boost performance along the way. A few things that we have found to make for a more successful performance max strategy starts with utilizing every available creative field, adding the maximum number of headlines, descriptions, images, etc. gives the campaign more to work with when attempting to find those winning combinations. 
Additionally, including as many of those audience signals that Jeremiah mentioned as possible will help guide the campaign towards your ideal customer. It is going to expand upon what you provide, as he mentioned, but it's helping guide in the right direction from the start. So it just has to do a little bit less learning. Last piece for this particular slide um, is we also strongly recommend testing against seasonality and promotional sale, sale periods whew, to make sure we're getting the right message in front of folks at the exact right time. When implementing Performance Max for the first time, we strongly recommend that you do not pause your existing standard campaigns. As Jeremiah kind of mentioned, when reviewing our experience with KEH, a gradual transition protects your ad spend and overall revenue while Google begins to gather that data for your new campaigns. And it allows us to be highly strategic in planning by factoring in things like profitability and inventory. In short, keeping your existing campaigns live just allows for more flexibility in testing. All right, one of my final notes and likely one of my most important ones when it comes to rolling out Performance Max campaigns is to give it time. It's super important that you give the campaign a minimum of a month before making any major changes or deciding whether or not it's working for your business. While some accounts see incredible performance from day one, it's more likely that you'll see the efficiency of the campaign slowly grow over that learning period and giving it more time will just allow you to get a clear picture of how successful these campaigns can be for your accounts.